All right. All right. Sundar, thanks for hanging out. Well, thanks for thanks for the time. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, <laughs> thanks for going to our event. Last, oh, of course. Uh, yesterday and yesterday, I'm flying right back to talk to you and everything. Yeah. I do have I do have one thing before we get started. Okay, so, um, you know, obviously, AI is the huge topic of the year, and also with the announcements. But in an earlier interview, you talked. People have asked you about you know where's Google stand with AI, and I, I believe the quote you said was along the lines of like you know, in cricket, we let the stick do the the, the bat do the talking, right? So I thought to kick things off. Oh my God! We start with a nice big bat. I don't know. You got a little. You got a little swing of ruin you. I. I just. Nice English fellow. It's a nice bat. Well done. <laughs> well, well balanced. You kind of distracted me now. I got. I got. I got to turn my focus back. You know, but I. I love. Uh, you know, I love. There's a famous cricket player who actually says once after he plays well. He says, let the bat do the talking. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. 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 So, always kind of believe that. that so. I mean, I think that, you know, what Google's accomplished in the size and scale of what you're doing, I, you, you do have the right to, to kind of adapt that terminology. So, you know, we were in New York. I was checking out the new phones, and AI is everywhere. I think if you looked up maybe what's the most searched up term, at least in the tech world, I think, and even general consumers, AI is the big thing. So what we're... Knowing you know a lot of what's happening, what was your impressions coming away from Made by Google? Look, I, um, you know, I was thrilled to see it. You know, for a while we've had this vision, you know, that because we came into the smartphone market much later, right? So what's, what would be our point of view, which is unique and differentiated from what was out there? And from the earliest days, it was clear it would be AI. You know, we had kind of thought of the company as AI first. And, and Pixel was a good way we approached it. That's why we started building Google Tensor, because we kind of saw this future where you, you know, the, the underlying SOC architecture needs to evolve to support ML, AI in a deep way. So it's been sequentially every year, it's been building on it. And this year, obviously, it's, it's been a generative AI moment. So bringing all that and, and, and putting it uh, in the context of the phone is something I love to see because you know, when you do stuff in a phone, it's very real for people. People are interacting with their devices. So it's a good way to bring AI to life. And uh, so I thought, I thought it was good. Um, there's a chock full of features, uh, you know, all, all based on AI and including on-device models now. But more importantly for me, the foundation of how we are building Pixel really helps set the stage for not just Pixel and Android to innovate with AI for many years to come. I think also when I see the features that you're rolling out, you know, we've heard when AI became this really big buzzword, you had, you know, two camps. You have these people like, oh, there's, it's, it can be dangerous and there's also, it can be really useful and obviously there's a balance in between, you know, you, you're, you as Google are evaluating, you know, when, when should we push, when should, when should we pull back and having these features on the phone like, we have Magic Eraser, but now Magic Editor is kind of like Magic Eraser on steroids, oh, yeah. right? And so, but these are comfortable ways that are approachable to someone like my friends or my mom to look at AI and not think of AI as this scary thing, but a very tangible thing. As we've seen these features ramp up, I mean, I called it the smartest smartphone on planet Earth because of what you're doing. How do you see this continue to evolve? Because it's what, we're at Pixel 8 now. And I, I feel we're really hitting this inflection point of now, oh, now we see what Google's really doing. Um, where, where are you seeing it go? And you know, are you happy with where it's at right now? You know, I mean, this is, uh, it's been great to see the evolution, right? We wanted to do Pixel because you have a clear vision for computing forward. And obviously you're accompl accomplishing that as Android, working closely with our partners and will continue to do so but sometimes it's tough to build out that vision without you being able to do it yourself too. And, and that's where Pixel really comes into play. It also really guides the ecosystem uh, in any category. Like when we've gone and done Pixel, it really gels that category. You know, take watches and Wear OS. Us doing a Pixel watch and working closely with Samsung on Wear OS, that really has helped us do better in that category. So I've always felt, you know, because Android is a big ecosystem, sometimes you need to guide the ecosystem too. Uh, Pixel plays a super important role there. And we're also trying to build a business there. <laughs> and, and, you know, and 
we are the challenger in this big smartphone market. But that gets us to rethink and reimagine and be a bit more, uh, we don't need to be conservative. We can try new things. Um, and, and that's what you're seeing, right? And uh, be it Tensor, be it uh, really putting a set of AI features forward on the phone. All that are new ways we can think and push the boundary of what, what phones and computing can be. So I'm really excited by the evolution. But we'll continue building on this. Just, uh, just even seeing the portfolio broaden. Just seeing us open our first store in Mountain View. Yeah. So to me, all of this is, is an evolution, and we are in it for the very, very long term. Well, this evolution is really apparent in numbers because, like you said, you're still a challenger. And a recent, you know, kind of one of the reports talked about how you have doubled your market share from a year ago. Now that goes from 2% to 4%. But when you're talking about a roughly $62, $63 billion industry of smartphones, I mean, that, that's a significant sign that tells you, okay, you know, you're seeing data that points to, all right, we're actually moving the needle a little bit, right? And so we talk about market share. You know you're a challenger, which I love, like, the fact that you're like, hey, we're acknowledging it, uh -huh. right? You can't deny that. And there's a recent, this, there's, they have this, like, kind of teen report that talks about, I don't know if you've heard of this, that talks about, like, what, what phones and ecosystems are teens using right now. And this is a challenge that you guys have to face because they said right now roughly 80% of teens are using, in the U.S. at least, are using iPhones and 20% are on Android. Now we know globally, Android is somewhere around like 70% global usage. So how, how do you think that you, the fact that you're a challenger, the fact that you're looking at this differently, what are you hoping to do to you know, change some of those dynamics? It's not gonna flip you know, 180, but there's obviously, you're, you're starting to actually chip away with it. Like how have you gotten to those steps and what do you need to do to kind of lure more of those people over? Because in the tech world, everyone loves what you guys are doing. Yeah. Right, but it's the consumer, the general consumer, those teens, that next generation that you kind of got to convince, right? Your kids, right? Like the, that generation is who you have to target. What are you guys trying to do with that? I mean, look, uh, Apple is obviously very strong, uh, particularly in the US. Uh, I think they have, um, you know, real strong network effects like iMessage, mm -hmm. which tends to play out in the demographics you're talking about, and, and the network effect is super strong. So I don't always, I'm not sure I have a good answer for that, mm -hmm. right? And what we are trying to do is things which are in our control, which is build the best phones possible, really innovate on the experience, and, and build from that foundation. Uh, I, think, I think AI gives us an opportunity uh, to push the frontier in a different way. And at the end of the day, look, that's the great thing about competition, users benefit, users have choice, makes your life interesting. It does, it does. It does. <laughs> Definitely interesting, and I, I think it's good. You know, it drives innovation, so I get excited by that. Uh, excited by that, but you know, uh, this is, there is no one-step answer. You kind of have to do all the, part of what makes the smartphone market uh, difficult is you have to get 100 things right, and, and you're speaking about one of the, one of the, one of the issues. Uh, we worked hard on RCS, Mm -hmm. Part of the reason we've really pushed hard on RCS, I think it would be great if phones can interoperate on messaging, right? You know, your phone call works across, your messaging seamlessly needs to work. I think everyone agrees work. with that, right? I, I think almost everyone agrees <laughs> with that. So, you know, so it's good. So we're trying to shake up those things and, and see, see what we can do. But from my perspective, what's important is we are adding new perspectives, new innovations, and making the market dynamic, and which I think Pixel uh, you know, genuinely does. And, and it's growing year on year, even though the overall smartphone market has been kind of in a more, uh, I would say, challenging situation for the past couple of years. Yeah. So the fact that Pixel has done well in that construct, I think, I think is a testament to the work by the team. I'm really excited for it. Well, you know, we've talked about it, and not to beat, beat it to, you know, beat it over, but it's, it's really, you guys are really doing something different with your phones, right? You have to, and this whole AI approach, I look at, you You guys showcased Google Assistant with Bard for the first time, like to show it publicly facing. And you you see the demos, and I can't wait to actually use it on a daily because I, there's a lot of gold in there, and I know that is just, again, much like Magic Eraser became Magic Editor, this Google Assistant Bard, this first generation that we're seeing, has so much more to go because of how you guys are plugging it in with all the services and, and we know how important ecosystem is. 
your ecosystem. Everyone uses, you know, Google is touched by Google in some way, shape, or form. And so now Google Assistant, which when it first came out was the best assistant, still in my opinion, still the best and smartest voice assistant out there. And so now throwing on this barred layer with, um, you know, generative AI properties, how, how do you see that evolving? Uh, you know, I mean, that'll be the frontier of what AI is. You know, what, what I get excited about that is you give users and over time developers basically access to the latest in, in a foundation models and the, and the frontier models. So we are, you know, I've been excited by BARD has been, we release BARD every six weeks um, and we will upgrade it to Gemini when Gemini is ready, which is our next generation foundation model. And, and with the assistant, it'll help us fin finally realize the true potential of what the assistant can be, right? We always had this vision for a personal assistant which you can rely on and it helps you get things done and it's really making your life easier. But the underlying technology wasn't quite ready to fulfill the promise. But now I think with generative AI, we can take one next big step in that direction. So that's what this moment is, what makes it exciting. And I think you'll really see it play out in 2024, right? As we all bring the next generation models and it all works in assistant well. So it's poised to be an exciting year ahead. And, uh, but ultimately we have to translate all this into use cases that make sense for people, right? And, and, uh, and you know, sometimes the use cases may be simple, like I saw the evolution of call screen in the NeoPixel phone, right? And you know, it's, a, it's a great evolution. I, I genuinely, as a user, use it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, it's super convenient. That's AI working behind the scenes to make your life a bit easier in that moment. I could be in a meeting, <laughs> you know, and this call comes and I can handle it, right? So it's, it's getting those basics and, and really making a difference in moments that matter. That's what people respond to. And so I'm excited about what's ahead. I know you're excited. I'm not here to get any scoops from you, but would you be able to elaborate maybe how you're thinking this next generation in 2024 will be different than, you know, I know we just heard Google Assistant with Barb, but where are you hoping to push it in 2024? Are you talking about Assistant or Pixel or? Uh, uh, assist, assistant, yeah, assistant. And, and Bard. No, look, I, I think our focus would be to, uh, you know, bring in LLMs and generative AI into it in a, in a responsible way, uh, responsible way. But, you know, can you, can you take the Assistant? And today, where the Assistant works well is if you have simple commands on your phone, but the more complex the tasks mm -hmm. get, you know, it, it, that, that's where the brittleness of the current generation of assistants are, right? And, and, and so the question is, can we take that leap forward and can we do more complex tasks for people, right? And, and, uh, and, and time will tell because it depends on where the capabilities of the underlying models evolve to and we're pushing that hard. And so we'll be good to see together, but my hope is by 24, we kind of do a next level of tasks which are a bit more involved and more complex for people to make their lives easier. So we also know that it's you know the 25th anniversary, you, you kind of addressed it of Google. Um, you've seen so many things and we know, you know AI is even the, the last two letters of your name, right? It's like, it's built, it's oh. coded into you. Has anyone pointed that out and said like, I, I, I send our pitch AI? You know, <laughs> I didn't process it, uh, but, you know. But I did, you know, I did have a laugh, chuckle after Google I.O. I think somebody edited the, oh. my video and it had just AI, AI, oh, AI. Yeah, yeah. AI, and AI, 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 generative AI, generative AI. So I thought it was, uh, I thought that was fun, but uh, fun to see, but the name, name is a new twist. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna put on, well, maybe we'll make a t-shirt out of it, put it in this store. Uh, but <laughs> Probably not, not a good idea. <laughs> but, yeah. but you know, I, I wanted to ask you, You've, you've seen tech change so much. You've been here at the epicenter of it. Is there any moments maybe that you could reflect on and be like, wow, it, it, 25 years later, where we are, what, what has maybe surprised you? Maybe something hasn't surprised you, but I've got to imagine there's been some surprises along your journey of seeing how technology has evolved from your perspective. Is there, is there any moment that you could kind of pick out when you think about it? I know I'm putting you on the spot that is like, okay, this was a foundational moment for me or for technology that really sticks out for you. Look, uh, ironically for me, you know, it was around 2015, 2016, uh, uh, you know, I, 
we were working on Google Photos, and you know, and we had uh, seen the Google Brain team had shown what you could do with neural networks, deep neural networks with image recognition. And in 2014, we acquired DeepMind, mm. and I saw the power of the general uh, agents they were building. And we kind of put a lot of that work together in 2016 with Google Photos, and really used machine learning to really make photos much, much, I mean, searching photos, organizing photos much, much better. That was an aha moment for me, and you know, I said, I said we are, as a company, we are gonna be AI first in everything we do. And we've been doing that since then. Uh, that's why be it Smart Compose in Gmail or even the early work in Pixel on computational photography or yeah. you know, Magic Eraser or building Google Tensor. So it's been a journey. And now there's one more uh, inflection with generative AI. Mm -hmm. uh, so there have been many moments all the way from smartphone, I mean PC to the web to the smartphone to now what we are going through with AI to things like AR ahead of us. Uh, the only thing constant about technology is that it's going to change and evolve, mm -hmm. right? And and so you know, but you know, I feel our work is to kind of harness it to make sure it ultimately it benefits people and society, right? And that, you know, that's what's the most important thing to do. And uh, but it's exciting to be in a moment of what I feel is a profound uh, moment. And AI will be a big platform shift. And while in the short term it'll go through ups and downs. If you take, a, if you step back and take the long-term view, it's one of the most profound shifts that will happen in technology and will ultimately impact society in a deep way. So it's a big moment, as big as it gets. That's great. So, Sundar, thank you so much for your time. It was, right, it was fun. It was, it was great to hang out with you. And you know, also just on behalf of creators, I just want to say thanks for making the time for us as well. And you know, we contribute to the YouTube platform that is there, that is under the Google, you know. Um, umbrella and it's it's been great and just thanks for making time for us. My creators are the heartbeat of uh, YouTube and it's what makes everything possible and I, I love, I mean I, I get a lot of uh, things out of YouTube and uh, I may send you a cricket video to show. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to watch it. Yeah, I'll send you the video of what I meant by when I said the bad does the yes. talking. Yes, I'll, I'll do I'll, that. I'll, I'll wait to see it, all right? All right, take all right, care. Thanks, Adar, appreciate Bye. it, man. Bye. Thank you.